Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hey everyone and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. It's Wednesday, show day, my favorite day of the week. I hope you guys are doing good. I love doing my show because I meet the most interesting people and today is going to be very interesting. I have author, spiritual teacher, and healer, Sheila Seppi, and she is going to join me in just a few minutes and her story is like, wow, so it's pretty cool. I'm excited to talk with her. Um, to my regulars, I just want to give you all a big shout out and say thank you so much for listening to me on a regular basis. It means the world. I get your emails. I read them. And I love that you keep coming back. But if you are joining me for the first time, I want to say welcome. And I hope that you keep coming back. Just to let you know how we do our show, my show is recording live right now. On, that's Wednesdays at 4 p.m. if you're listening to the replay. But what we do do is we take each show and we put it up on Ohm Times Radio, the replay and the archives. You can listen to any show at any time you like. I also take the show and I put it on my podcast on postcardstotheuniverse.com. And you can go through the list and see. And if there's a guest that resonates with you or a show that, that you look you might be interested in, you know, listen. I would love it. And uh, hopefully you'll keep coming back. A little bit more about me. I am an artist. I'm an author. I'm a photographer. And I have a book titled Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams. And in my book, I took 30 manifesting stories along with photographs of people, the contributors, what I call a manifesting postcard. And a manifesting postcard is like a mini vision board. So somebody puts something they want to bring into their life on their postcard. I photograph it. When that manifestation shows up in the reality, we share their story. So there's 30 of those stories in the book. And it's broken down into um, the life themes where we all want more abundance, which is in love and our health, our career, money, so much more. And I have a whole bunch of writing exercises and fun manifesting games in each area to bring those things to you. So check it out. You can find my book on at your local bookstore. If it's not in, they'll order it for you or Barnes and Noble and or of course Amazon, right? Amazon has everything. What don't they have nowadays? Um, so it's fun. The inner work exercises are really cool because it helps us get really clear on what it is we want to manifest. So my book came out, I can't even believe it, four and a half years ago in, in the end of 2019, right before COVID. So what I started doing is because now so many years have passed, I started re-photographing the postcards and I decided I wanted to start doing readings from the book on social media. So if you follow along on my social media or if you're interested, you can find it. I share five minute videos, about five minutes, of each person's story with an image of their postcard. And then each Monday, I'm releasing an image of the postcards from my book, but they're new. They're different. So my work has changed a lot in the last five years. So it's been really, really fun doing that. And if you do uh, follow along and you, and you check it out on my social media, I have it on Instagram, uh, TikTok, LinkedIn, and uh, YouTube, let me know you're there. Say hi, you know, give me a like, share with your friends. I would love it. I do a, a couple of uh, workshops also, and you can find out about those if you go to my website, postcardstotheuniverse.com. I use manifesting. Um, I have a course called Manifesting Through Gratitude, a visual journey. And we use gratitude as a very powerful way to manifest the things that we want. And we also use our camera phones because we all have our camera phones now to photograph. So it's a lot of fun. And then I have a Making a Manifesting Postcard um, workshop coming up again. I do those every so often. So check it out. If you have any questions, just reach out to me and of course, I'm always asking people to send me a manifesting postcard. You can find out how to create one and where to send it on my website. If you have any questions, just reach out to me on any of my socials or you can email me. 
So I hope that you do that. They're so much fun to make. Okay, let me get to my guests because <laughs> this is a first for me. And I've been doing the show now, God, I think at least four years. So I've never had a person who has had this experience. So I'm really excited to talk to Sheila Seppi. She is a soul exchange walk-in. She entered into the body of a 38-year-old mother with three children and was immediately healed from documented illnesses and took on her new personality with spiritual gifts and memories she didn't even believe in. Her life was transformed and she has never been the same. So her first soul experience was in the angelic realm where she was given the name I don't know if I'm going to say it right, but she'll correct me when she comes on. No, I think it's Noela by her original star family. Her souls is a combination of her angelic, Palladian, Syrian, Arcturian, Lyrian, Mantis, and <laughs> these, are, these are like tongue twisters, Andromedan, multidimensional Christ consciousness lineage. So interesting. She arrived from her collective with a mission to be a way, sh a way shower for, human for humanity by helping people to spiritually awaken and evolve. When she leaves this life, she will return to her seventh density collective. She is an author of Walk-Ins, Cosmology of the Soul. She's a speaker, multidimensional life coach, healer, regression therapist, shamanic practitioner, and spiritual teacher. She works with the higher dimensional frequencies to empower others to embrace their own multidimensional aspects through a variety of services. And she is also the founder of Spirit Way Wellness and Conscious Awakening Network, where she has a reoccurring series called Cosmic Conversations, Beyond the Skyline, and Conscious Awakening with Sheila Seppi. And if you want to find out more about her, just go to her website, which is www.sheila.com. Seppi, S E P P I dot com. Welcome, Sheila. Thanks so much for being here with me. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you because, like <laughs> I was saying, you, okay, so I've done so many shows now and I've never come across, I've heard of it, but I've never come across somebody who is a soul exchange walk in. So we have to to start with that. <laughs> For anybody who's like, what are they talking about? <laughs> what, <laughs> what is that? Well, let me tell you first that if this experience had not happened to me, I mm -hmm. wouldn't even believe that it's possible. But when you're living something, you know, it, it, it even living this has been hard for me to mm -hmm. um, conceive and even wrap my brain around it. But here's what happened to me. First off, okay. I had never read a metaphysical book ever. Okay. I had no idea about walk-ins. I And if you would have told me about walk-ins, I would have laughed you out of the room. So that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was a very, very sick person starting in about my 20s up until okay. the time this happened when I was 38. I had a whole host of illnesses, everything I'd been diagnosed with bone cancer, brain tumors, fibromyalgia, oh chronic fatigue. I walked with a cane. Um, they told me that I would have MS by the time I was 40 years old. Um, I had the beginning stages of rheumatoid arthritis. So needless to say, my body was literally falling apart. I also had three young children, mm -hmm. 12, 6, and 3, and a very, very demanding job. So, you know, every day was just like pushing through, pushing through, pushing through. And literally one night I just fell into bed and it's like, oh, God, I just can't keep doing this, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. The next morning, it seemed to be around seven o'clock. It felt as if someone reached down, grabbed me by the hair of my head and pulled me bolt right up in bed. Then it was like lightning ran through my body, and I was in white space. Now, I don't know how long I was in white space, but I know I was very comfortable. I was out of pain, which was huge. And if they had given me the opportunity, I probably would have stayed right there. But the mm -hmm. next thing I knew, my peripheral vision was coming around, and then my frontal vision. And as I sat there looking around the room, it felt to me like everything was the same. 
but everything was different, and I didn't know how. Now, I didn't know what I had just experienced was Mm -hmm. literally my soul, my original Mm -hmm. soul, which we call the natal soul, left my body as if I had died, and a new soul came in. And that's what we refer to as a soul exchange. Now, there there are many other types of walk-ins, and we can talk about that a little mm-hmm. later. But for something like this to happen to me, I, I, I didn't even have a foundation for it. Because like I said, I'd never even read any mm-hmm. type of metaphysical book. Um, I knew about angels because I was very religious, not spiritual, but very mm-hmm. religious. I had no idea about the power of manifestation or the law of vibration, or Uh the universal laws. I didn't know about any of that stuff. What I did know is that all of a sudden, I remembered past lives that I did not believe in when I went Mm. to bed the night before. I started remembering universal truths, which has taken me like 20 plus years to unpack. And I remembered healing modalities that I'd never studied. So number one, that freaked me out. Sure. And then I started hearing voices. I started seeing people walking around that wasn't there. And I knew nothing about clairvoyance or clairaudience. I had no idea. When I was walking across the carpet, it felt like it was the first time I'd ever experienced that. When I opened up the refrigerator, all of the smells was like I was just mm. experiencing it. When I caught my reflection in the mirror, And I was Mm -hmm. looking at myself. It was like I was looking out of somebody else's eyes. Wow. So, again, needless to say, I was freaked out. I was freaked out even more when I went back to the doctor and all my symptoms were gone. All of them. Now, if I had been a doctor, I would have been Mm -hmm. running every test known to mankind on me to (laughs) figure out what happened. But they basically patted me on the head and said, okay, this is great. (laughs) Good checkup. I guess our medicine worked. And so I walked around in a state of daze and confusion for like the first six months. But what began to happen to me is everything changed. My personality changed. The music that I liked changed. The way I dressed, the way I articulated my sentences, everything about me changed, including the people I hung around with. Because when I started sharing this with them, sure. they dropped me like I had a disease. Oh, I'm you know, they're sure. like, ah, get away. You know, and so. Within three months, literally, though, I left that marriage because there was no Mm. resonance with the person Mm. I was married to. And then I moved to a town. I stayed in the same job. But within that next three months, I had been offered a position in a different state. And when I was there, now this dates me, I was looking in the back of the phone directory, and there was a postcard size. Here we are, postcard. But there was a (laughs) postcard size Add Mm -hmm. in the back of the phone directory for a spiritual counselor. Well, Mm. spirituality, in my mind, was the same as religion. And counselor really resonated with me because my background was in psychology. And I had just Mm. enough that made me begin to psychoanalyze myself. I had already decided I was having a psychotic break. I was Mm -hmm. having all kinds of trauma because... I also had no memory of my previous life except for a few select memories of my children. I remembered my parents, but I didn't have any memories associated with it. So needless to say, I thought I was losing it. So when I went to visit this lady, she Mm -hmm. also happened to be of Hopi lineage. And right away, she pretty much understood what was happening to me. But you know, in a, a couple sessions, she sort of leaned um, or led up to the fact of sharing with me that she thought I was a walk-in. And when she first ter- told me that concept, I was furious mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I wanted to go. I wanted to take a little pill and life would get back to normal because, remember, I was very Western medicine at that time. Mm-hmm. And because I had no more symptoms, I was just, I figured Western medicine had cured me. And so... I began to study with her, and that's when I began to learn about shamanism. 
And when I started studying shamanism and understanding that everything is of God and learning about the directional energies and learning to meditate in the style that they called journeying, that's Mm -hmm. when I met my spirit team. And Mm -hmm. they began to explain to me what had happened. And so, you know, it took me again, it took me years to be able to drop into and fully accept who I was. Now, when walk-ins happen today, it seems Mm -hmm. like people are dropping in, they're hitting the ground running, they know who they are, they're on task, and bam, full steam ahead. But for me, Mm -hmm. I... And that's not me. (laughs) That was definitely not me. And, you know, my mom sat me down because she thought I had the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. Right, because you had no memories of your childhood. Mm, That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so everything has really progressed from then. So I, you know, I've learned to embrace who I am. In Mm -hmm. working with my guides, I've learned more about walk-ins and several years ago, about four years ago, I was called to write Walk-Ins, Cosmology of the Soul, Mm -hmm. where I shared my story and the story of 15 other people. And literally last month, I finished a second book with Barbara Lamb, and we wrote um, a book called Cosmic Convergence, Journeys of Mm -hmm. Walk-Ins, Star Seas, and Hybrids. And... Mm. You know, part of my life path has been to share these experiences with people because Mm -hmm. a lot of people are having spiritual awakenings. They're having walk-in experiences. They're waking up to the fact that they're a star seed and there's Mm -hmm. no one for them to turn to. And so we're hoping that these books uh, can Mm -hmm. kind of serve as a pathway for people to begin to understand who they are. Yeah, because I imagine a lot of people think they're having a psychotic break like you did. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So let me ask you, the, uh, the original soul, did, you, did mm-hmm. your soul, when you found out where your soul came from, did, your, the, did the two souls merge? Or did that soul go on their own journey and instead of having the body die, there was a call for you to come in and take over that body instead of being born and starting from the beginning. Does that make sense? Does my question make sense? (laughs) That is exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened because I did not need that gestation or birth or young adulthood experience. I needed a full uh, mature Mm. adult form in which to step into. And yes, had I not stepped in, then this body would have, you know, died. And then these children Mm. would have been left motherless, et cetera, et cetera. And so when I stepped in, I agreed to take on this life. And Mm -hmm. I also agreed to finish her mission as well as to implement mine. And, you know, when I first learned about this, one of the first questions I asked my guides, is like, oh, my gosh, am I a body snatcher? You know, because I was really concerned. I'm like, oh, my God, this is the craziest thing ever. And they're mm-hmm. like, no, 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 the body would have died. She was mm-hmm. a very sick person. Mm-hmm. But when I came in, the energy, the frequency that I was carrying in my body was so different to that of the person that had left the body that immediately my frequency instantaneously healed the body because no longer mm-hmm. was that part of who I was. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I understand it. And I believe that the body's just the body and the soul has much greater, you know. So for me, I, oh, yeah. I can grasp it. I know a lot of people are hearing this and they're like, what in the world? <laughs> right. but, 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 you know, if you believe that you keep coming back time and time as a different, you know, you're playing a different character, but the soul has its own journey, then a walk-in doesn't seem so far-fetched to me that the body just, you know, the body would have died, but the soul decided it was time to move on and another soul came in. Now, when you explain this to your, because I'm assuming your children, are they adults now, your children? They are. Mm -hmm. And you're, and you're, when you, what did your children and your parents end up uh, saying when you were, when you sort of figured out what was going on? 
Well, the first question that my mom asked was, Mm -hmm. you mean I'm not your mom anymore? And Mm -hmm. I said, no, no, you're still my mom. You gave birth to this body. It's Mm -hmm. just I'm a new and improved version. And she's like, okay. (laughs) She Mm -hmm. just accepted that. When I explained to my dad, I said, Mm -hmm. you remember when I was very sick? Yes. You remember all of a sudden I became clairvoyant and clairaudient and clairsentient and I could tell people about illnesses and I knew about their past lives and I knew all of this stuff about people. He goes, yes. I said, that's because the old soul, the original soul to the body left and a new one came in and he Mm. got really quiet and he goes, oh, that's when Jesus instantaneously healed you and gave you gifts of the spirit. And I said, you're exactly Mm. right. And so they Mm -hmm. came at it from the level of understanding that truly made sense to them. And as for my children, for the first time, especially in my son's life, he had a mother who could actually get down on the floor and play with him, who could take him to the park, who could run and play Mm -hmm. and had energy to do things because my life had regressed to the point that I was laying on the couch Mm. and playing blocks and stuff with my kids with one arm over. And so they loved it. And as they got older, then I explained it to them and they're like, Oh, that makes sense. And that was it. (laughs) (laughs) And did you, did you remember, cause you said you had no real memories of your past, just certain select ones. Did you feel a maternal love for your children right away as the new soul entering this body? Instantaneously. Instantaneously. Mm -hmm. And it was immediate. It was so deep. And Mm -hmm. then I kept asking my guides, I'm like, are you sure that maybe I'm not their mother and Mm -hmm. I haven't had a psychotic break or I'm having Mm -hmm. a multiple personality disorder? Right. No. No, 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 no. You know, there. it's like you knew these children from the other side. You have a connection with okay. them already. And that so we sense. were already connected. And possibly they chose to come into this life because I truly believe and even mm-hmm. remember the birth plans and sharing. Okay. You know, you choose your parents. Sure. So maybe they chose because they knew I would be coming in later. I don't, right. I, you know, I, I can't. You don't know yet, but you will, plan. you will know, but, you will know. You just don't right. know yet. <laughs> you exactly. will know at some point. Exactly. <laughs> now, and do you know close. what happened? To, uh, good. Do you know what happened to the original soul that left? Um, according to my team, that soul left. It mm-hmm. had its soul review And it went on to its next phase of existence, whatever that was for that soul. Because it's my belief that when Mm -hmm. source or God desired to Mm -hmm. know itself, there were multiple blueprints or templates, which were the thoughts of God that Mm -hmm. became manifest. And part of those, some of those was for other soul creations. And so who we are today is an individuated aspect of source having the experience of the created because he is the creator and now we are the created Mm -hmm. and he experiences through us. And so Mm -hmm. everyone who's listening to this, whether you resonate with these words or have ever thought about this or think I'm crazy or whatever you want to think, Mm -hmm. We all are eternal beings. Our souls Mm -hmm. never, ever die. And I remember slipping out of other forms. And it's Mm -hmm. almost just like when you get out of the tub and you kind of like Mm -hmm. shake off just a little bit. Or you know how a dog shakes it after yeah, a bath? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's kind of the way you're doing with the physical form. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, what was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then we go, we have a soul review. Sometimes if there's been mm-hmm. trauma in the lifetime, we go for healing. But then we always go back to an area where we decide if we want to do something like this again. Right. And it's not that we have to. It's that Mm -hmm. we choose to. We may choose to come in as a human form. We -hmm. may choose to come in on another planet because Mm -hmm. everything 
you know, God's source of energy is infinite. And there mm-hmm. are multiple universes out there for us to explore and to play in. And so when we come here, the problem is we have the veil of forgetfulness. So we mm-hmm. forget how we can instantly manifest. I know many times I got in trouble after I first incarnated because I I remember just thinking and therefore it is and mm-hmm. whatever you were thinking came manifest and I was like yeah, I'm broken. <laughs> yeah. what, what's going what's going on here? Energy and yeah. vibration don't work. The, what about the law of attraction or setting my yeah. intention or visualizing? Mm-hmm. None of that's happening. You know? mm-hmm. So, you know, manifestation here is a very slow Very different. Process. Yeah, it's slow. Yeah, well, very, we're very, very dense. Different. We're very dense. So yes. it's slow. Yeah, it, it could be a slow process. Well, I remember yes. when I first learned about that concept about that we are each God we're we're God experiencing ourselves each soul is God experiencing itself each life Mm -hmm. and when I really understood that and I got it it made so much sense about why certain things happen in the world good and what we perceive as bad what we see as bad because it never made sense to me any other way like if you think of god as separate than you it's like how could god let these things happen but when you think that you are god but you are having a human experience or another experience on another planet i don't know it made it clicks. It like went, oh, okay, yeah. now I get it. Now I understand why, you know, we're all connected and all the souls are connected. I mean, it's so deep and we could really go deep, but I have so many questions, just personal right. questions for you and your personal journey. So let's take our break here. And then when we come back, I have tons more questions for you. All right, everybody stay tuned and we will be back in just a couple minutes. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Everyone has a story. I have a story. You have a story. We all have a story. As I see it, you have three choices. Allow your story to define you, use it to excuse you, or utilize it as a method to empower you. It's your life. You have the power. You choose. Rewrite your story on finduniquelyyou.com. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hi. I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. 
And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. Hey everyone, and welcome back. And if you're just joining me, I have author of Walk-Ins, Cosmology of the Soul, Sheila Seppi with me, and she is a soul exchange walk-in, and we are talking about her personal experience. So Sheila, you said at first you didn't know what was going on, So, and then you started, you, you were connected already to the other side, and you were getting messages. When did it be revealed to you um, where you came from and why you, and why you were here? Within the first year of my mm-hmm. incarnating, um, mm-hmm. things began to reveal to me. Okay. So the first three months, I left the marriage. The second three months, I found I moved to a different state and mm-hmm. found my spiritual teacher. And those next six months were really spent learning about shamanic journey, shamanic okay. travel. And it was there when I met my guides that I began to ask them questions because at that, you know, mm-hmm. 23 years ago, there were no books about, walk- right. well, there was one book about walk-ins, but I didn't know anything about it. I didn't have any access to any type of information. Um, I wouldn't have read it anyway because I was still stumbling around mm-hmm. trying to find my own way. But within that first year of really being able to tap in and to talk with my spiritual team and find out who I was and where I was from, that was huge for me because mm-hmm. it really, you know, began to anchor all of this, these concepts basically that I had that were floating around in my mind. And it let me know that, yeah, I'm, I'm really not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. And that's when you found out that you were part of, what, what, what did you say? What did I read? It was, you're part of the angelic realm. And you were given, yes. uh, did I say the name right? Is it Nawela yes, or Nawala? Mm-hmm. Nawela. Okay. No, it's Nawela. And you're and from so, a star family. Okay, yeah. Explain that a little bit. Yes. Okay, so when I first began to find out who I was, I discovered that my first incarnation was in the angelic realm and that Mm. I actually worked with the Elohim and I was in a role where I was helping to create other angelic beings. And I was there for really eons of time. Mm -hmm. And each of us has that first experience. Sometimes that first experience is on a planet. But for mm-hmm. me, mine was, in, uh, mine was in the angelic realm. They told me that the name that they gave me, Nawala, or Nawala, Nawala, was mm-hmm. the vibrational frequency because when we move, it, there's like a, you know, sound mm-hmm. that comes with it. And every person has their own originating frequency. And mine, because it was in the angelic realm, was Noela. And that's, mm. it's kind of like my name here is Sheila. And then mm. my other name was Noela. And from there, I traveled through many, many star systems, as all of us has. I was in the Lyrian system when mm. there were... Um, the Orion Wars. I've been, I've lived in Orion. I've lived as a mantis being. I've had many, many um, wow. angelic experiences as well as Palladian and Lyran and Siren and Arcturian mantis. Mm-hmm. Um, but wow. when I first came in, um, okay, let me back up. Mm-hmm. Because of all of these various experiences, I had come back to myself. So for the listeners, if you make a fist, this mm-hmm. would be considered your oversoul. Okay. If you expand your fingers and let them dangle down, these are individual lifetimes. 
that your mm-hmm. oversoul is happening. At the very end is what's called the Shantias Khan. And the Shantias Khan is what holds the higher self, the spiritual bodies, and the soul for a particular lifetime. Well, all of my aspects had come back into the fist, okay? okay? And this was creating what's called a collective. And it had okay. all of my aspects, the angelic, the vegan, the Orion, the Arcturian, whatever, that was in there. And I recently have come to understand that the name of my mm-hmm. oversoul is called Yani. And I mm-hmm. said, Yanni, I said, that name sounds familiar. And they kind of laughed because when I first, within that first year or two that I was here, I was mm-hmm. drawn to an artist by the name of Yanni. Uh, <laughs> I think he played the saxophone mm-hmm. and yeah, the piano. Yeah, I know who he is. And I, yeah, was, I, know who he I is. was like, yeah. yeah. So I was like, <laughs> oh, this really isn't my taste in music, so why am I drawn to it? And I just kept listening. Mm. And they're kind of like, you're just a little slow, honey. But, you know, <laughs> you are You'll from the that. Yanni. <laughs> it's like, okay, give me a flash of light or something. And so my collective is so great about giving me hints. But now, because I have learned who they are, mm-hmm. we are anchored in. I am still attached to them. So when I mm-hmm. first entered this body more of the Arcturian energy came in first. The reason for that is the previous soul had been Arcturian. So Mm. I was able to enter the body with a similar frequency that did not fry the neurology or Mm. the biology. Over time, more and more of that collective energy has been able to move in and out of the body, and now I operate primarily as an Andromedan. Uh, still able to pull on all of those other attributes, Mm -hmm. but that's because I'm still connected to my collective. So prior to my incarnation, I was in the Andromedan system, and uh, what we were doing is a whole story in and of itself, but we received, there was like this resonance or this calling that we felt, and it was literally from Gaia, and she was Mm -hmm. asking for assistance for individuals to come, and we came as an entire collective to the earth, but we were working in the crystalline grid because we Mm. were helping to repair the false matrixing, which maybe we have time to get into. I'm not sure. Yeah, you can get into that, too, when you finish this thought. Yeah, because I was going to ask you what that is about, so go ahead. I'll let you follow your thought process. Go ahead. (laughs) Okay, so we were working there. Uh, mm-hmm. We were working in that crystalline grid, and when the soul of this body cried out to be released, it was decided by the collective that mm-hmm. I would be the aspect to incarnate. Mm-hmm. And okay. so that's kind of, you know, my journey and how I really got here and got anchored and how I continued to work, you know, and bring forward that angelic realm and the Palladian and Lyran and everything, um, and then also be embodied and work within that Christ consciousness because that is a field of mm-hmm. energy. It's a high vibrating frequency. Yeah. And when you uh, are operating in that, you hold that also within your frequency structure. But okay. I will jump into the matrix mm-hmm. because yeah. um, one of the things that I learned is when this planet was first created, it was actually a fifth density planet. Now, Mm -hmm. all of the planets uh, in our universe are actually a fifth density planet, but throughout time, there were lower vibrating beings that desired Mm -hmm. to be able to control this planet. And Mm -hmm. one of the ways that they did that was they sent a physioelectric field of force into Mm -hmm. the crystalline grid, and they began to reprogram it because the crystalline grid that surrounds the earth was uh, it also vibrationally connects into the ley lines of this Mm -hmm. planet and there's a crystalline structure to these ley lines and so any of the beings that reside on this planet are being supported by the high frequency that fifth dimensional frequency of the crystalline grid as well as what's found within the earth however these beings learned how to hijack that frequency. And so Mm. they sent into it 
this physioelectric field that reprogrammed and lowered the vibration of Earth. And this is where we began to feel separate. We began Mm. to feel fear. And we really, if you look at it, this is the first time that people began to find themselves or feel separate from source. Mm. Yeah. So with that in place, these beings who had lost their own co-creative power were able to control and manipulate a population that then mm. would basically do their bidding. And oh. so that is what set in place the false matrix. Now, the false matrix itself also mm. began to imprint on the cellular structure of the beings and actually permeated into the DNA. And we're talking at least 12,000 years that this has been going on. The beautiful thing about this time on the planet, as more and more people are waking up to the truth of who they are as a spiritual being, as an eternal soul, they Mm -hmm. are actually breaking through and shifting that DNA frequency. And that is, I think, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful aspects of this ascension or awakening process. Because, you know, most Mm -hmm. of us, thats anyone that's hearing this, chances are Mm -hmm. you've done ascension many, many times. Ascension Mm -hmm. is nothing new. We ascend every day. We've been ascending since the dawn of time. But what makes this ascension different is when the mass population breaks through that false matrixing, Mm -hmm. And they begin to embody and to hold that true fifth dimensional frequency. We can shift along with Gaia into that Mm -hmm. fifth density. Now, when I'm talking density, I'm talking something different than a dimension. Mm -hmm. Because a dimension, in my opinion, is more of a perspective. A density is a place. A density Mm -hmm. is the form. You know, we can have a light density, we can have a heavy Mm -hmm. density. And if you begin to look at the densities, like that first density, that's really what's associated with the basic matter, such as the mineral and the elements and those types of things. And the second density is where the animals and the biological life comes in. And where we are right now is Mm -hmm. third density, because this level of consciousness, that's associated with the human experience. And that's characterized by our self-awareness and our individuality, not separateness, Mm -hmm. but our individuality and the capacity for the rational thought. And so as we move up in density, that fourth Mm -hmm. density, that's where we have more of, um, like right now our bodies are Mm carbon-based. So when we move into the fourth, it's more carbon-silica. We move into the fifth, it's more silica-based. We keep moving up silica light, liquid light. We get all the way up until we are in that pre-matter state where source energy is itself. And when I came in, I was in the seventh density. And that's Mm. the place of like expanded spiritual evolution because we had already had all the individual experiences and had come back and we were merged into a single multidimensional aspect of itself. And we Mm. use that as a, it was like a group consciousness. So now, as I'm working with my collective, they're still working on the matrix. Because even though that physioelectric field is not there, right below the crystalline structure, that's Mm -hmm. where you have the collective consciousness of humanity. And so they're Mm. still working to bring in more and higher light codes to help people wake up to help them remember who they are and to understand that all of this negativity that's going on is just part of the experience. The reality is when you're on the other side, there is no good or bad. There just is. And everything that we're experiencing here just is. It's like Mm -hmm. this is a holographic density. But it's still holographic, and we can shift and we can change. And when enough people in their collective consciousness wake up to who they truly are and they connect back in with that crystalline grid and the crystalline grid sends that energy into the earth, we all 
will transform into those higher aspects of what we already are. So fascinating. Oh my, yeah, I understand everything you're saying because I've read all, a lot about what you're talking about. So I clearly mm -hmm. understand what you mean. So when we talk about in terms of walk-ins, are there a lot of wa walk-ins in right here doing this, what you're doing here specifically as a call from Gaia to come and heal the earth and help raise the density or throughout the planet? Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of thousands of walk-ins, but not mm. just walk-ins, there's also star seeds. Right. And for me, you know, we all have to come from somewhere. Mm. And right. some walk-ins come directly from a planet. And mm. when they wake up and remember, oh, yes, I am an Arcturian, I am a Palladian, they're waking up. Now, a lot of times people are waking up to their multidimensionality. Yeah, because it's like, oh yeah, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. We all come from somewhere. <laughs> I came, yeah, I came from my collective. Other people come from collectives as well. Other mm -hmm. people come from different realities or different dimensions or different universes. But mm -hmm. on this planet right now, there are tons. I don't, I mm -hmm. don't have a number. I do know that there was supposed to be a hundred and sixty thousand new walk-ins to enter into this plane of existence about two years ago. Mm. And because so many star seeds are waking up and remembering who they are, identifying mm -hmm. with their home planet, helping to anchor higher vibrational frequencies onto the planet, there wasn't a need for as many mm. walk-ins. And so that number has been mm. reducing. And, you know, there's different types of walk-ins as well. Mm -hmm. You can have walk-ins that are a soul infusion, meaning that you're bringing in more higher divine aspects of um, your collective or mm -hmm. your oversoul or even up into the monad. You know, you can come all the way up to right uh, right where source energy is. There's people waking mm -hmm. up that have soul layering. And wow. these types of walk-ins, when they come in with soul layering, they mm -hmm. really have multiple aspects of the natal soul that are waking up to these higher dimensions. Or it's a collective consciousness that oversees the experience, but that interconnects with their individual soul, their Shantiyas Khan, their higher self, the multidimensional selves. You have what's called, you know, poppers or poppins mm -hmm. or jumpers. And these are souls that come in for very brief experiences mm -hmm. and then they leave. And you have yeah. soul braids, which a lot of people, you know, recognize with that where you have two individual souls that are positioned, you know, basically side by side and intertwined. Uh, with mm -hmm. each other. You've got soul projection. And that would be if someone is on a different planet and they're in like a stasis pod or mm -hmm. even if they're in a meditative state that they're projecting part of their soul into a different experience. And you have wow. people that are like soul step down. There's so many and in the new book that Barbara Lamb and I have written, I really mm -hmm. expand on the first book of Walk-In's Cosmology of the Soul. Um, okay. It doesn't have the, as many stories about walk-ins, but it really delves into the different types of walk-ins. And I wanted to put a lot more um, mm -hmm. in my first book, but, sure. you know, it was... It, there's only so much info. There's only so much. You have to edit. I know. As an <laughs> author, I know so you much. have to edit. Yeah. Right. Are, do you have That's memories right. still? Do you have memories of the other side? Do you, do you still, do you have memories? Do. You too. Oh, I wow. do. And the most vivid memories that I have is being part of that collective energy because mm. it is, it was very diamond-esque, very sparkly. Mm. Um, I didn't have an arm. Or anything mm -hmm. like that. But if I thought about having an arm, I would raise my arm and it would almost be like just little twinkling lights. And I knew what it was like to be the arm. I knew what it was like to be the bone inside the arm. I knew what wow. it was like to be the bone marrow inside the arm, to have the blood. I knew what it was like to be in a form, you know. And I, it, when you're on yeah. the other side, 
you mm-hmm. hold that memory. You know what it's like to be everything because you wow. are connected in. And on other planets, a lot of people, they do they choose not to have that veil of forgetfulness. Now, on this planet, mm-hmm. part of the agreement is we do have that veil. It's kind of like we're playing hide and seek with ourselves. You know, we come in, mm-hmm. we're having these experiences, and we wake up as like, oh, yeah. I'm a soul having a human experience. That's right. None of this is really real. Well, it is real, but it's not real. Oh, 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 you know. So all of these things begin to happen. But on the other side, it Mm -hmm. it isn't always this way. And on other planets, it's not always this way. I remember more, um, I think, some of the more recent lifetimes Mm -hmm. of being on craft, on different craft and working, um, kind of like in very peaceful mission roles. I remember mm. being parts of council. I remember sitting around these massive, mm. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a table, but it's not a table. Um, okay. But I, I have those kinds of memories. I have memories of having children on our tourists. You know, mm. I have two boys and a girl, and sometimes they can actually come and visit me. But uh, oh, wow. when I was a mantis, I had two daughters, and mm. one of the daughters uh, will come, and at nighttime, we will travel, and she teaches me about the energies in between the dimensions. And so I do have certain types of memories. I don't mm. have, this is my house, I get up every right. day and go to a job. It's mm-hmm. more of... um it's more of that preciousness that you mm-hmm. remember those things that you hold dear in your yeah. heart, those those learning experiences. And really, it's it's about family and love. Mm, I love that. Do you have faith that we are collectively, our consciousness is is vibrating higher and we are moving in that higher direction where... <laughs> You want to go. I want to go. <laughs> Most of my listeners want to go. You do. Okay. Because you kind Absolutely. of are tapped in. And, and, Good. <laughs> and here's the thing. You know, everybody's like, oh, my God, look around. Look at the wall. Yeah. Look at this. Mm-hmm. This I know. is nothing new. It's nothing new. It's mm-hmm. just that there is more light on the planet. And people are no longer willing to accept the things that have okay. occurred yeah. throughout mm-hmm. all of time. It's like no more. We have mm. this innate desire to hold more light. More light's coming onto the planet all the time. You know, mm. we have this phenomenal eclipse that is yeah. happening, which will serve as a gateway for higher vibrating photonic energy to actually enter onto the planet. And those people who are ready to hold that frequency will be able to hold it. The other Mm. people, it'll just wash right off of them. And so many people say, but what happens if I ascend and my family members don't? It's like, you know what? Mm. It's not a race. (laughs) We're all going to get there. (laughs) but It's it's not a race. You know, some people will purposefully choose to stay with the trauma dramas of third dimensional Mm. reality. Yeah. For whatever learning, or maybe they're choosing unconsciously to stay so that they can help other people wake up. You know, you mm, just don't know yeah. what they wrote or chose in their life plan. But I do tell people, you know, whenever we cross to the other mm-hmm. side, there is no mm-hmm. judgment. We do go through a life review, but that's mm-hmm. done very lovingly. It's yeah. it's done with patience and it's done with a lot of care. So really, we don't have anything to worry about. We're moving mm. to these higher states of being and we are source energy. We are part of that. So every experience that we have, no matter mm. how dark we feel like it is, it's a beautiful experience because we learn from that and we all grow from that. Mm, I love that. We only have like a minute and a half left. I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> it's so interesting. <laughs> Is there anything you want to leave us with and tell people the best way they can listen to you? Because you have your show also. So if people want to oh, hear more about this. Yeah, go ahead. 
Okay, thanks. So you can find me on my website, SheilaSeppi.com. You can also visit, which is part of my soul mission as a way shower, the Conscious Awakening Network.org. You can find us on YouTube. You can. We also have a website. We're on Roku, Amazon, Apple. T- Actually, we're on about 40 different platforms. Mm. So if you go to Spotify, you can type in Conscious Awakening Network, and not just myself, but everybody that's part of this voice, you'll be able to go through. My particular shows are live on Tuesdays and Thursday nights where, uh, much like this show, I bring people on and interview them and they share their beautiful stories with everyone. I have another podcast on Fridays at noon, Conscious Awakening Series with Sheila Seppi, and I have one on Sundays uh, that is Beyond the Skyline, and that one's more, that's geared more towards um ufology and uh, experiences oh well thank you sheila yeah i gotta go tune into your show i gotta listen to more about this stuff (laughs) it was such a pleasure having you you on today all right everyone (laughs) oh you're welcome thank you for listening to postcards to the universe with melissa creating the life you crave and i'm wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with abundance and love peace